Hi guys, this is a video of the Red Game 2, um, showing you how the clock system works. Well, usual, usually on computers, the clock is the little mechanism that decides when what happens. So, like, everything happens when the clock goes tick. So, yeah, all the commands happen, then it gives us some time to complete them, and the, then the clock signals the next one. The Red Game 2 has a very, very, very advanced system. It's actually a three-stage clock. Well, three-stage clock controller. It's one actual clock. But it splits all over the computer and makes sure that everything happens in perfect sync. And it's actually one of the secrets on how I made the Red Game 2 so fast. So let's start. It's stage 1 is the Startup Manager. It's this little panel over here. It consists of four buttons and two lamps. Turn on, turn off, manual tick, reset, and uh, yeah. It's all controlled inside this little here thing here. This is what controls resets. This is little data flip flop here. Or a snore latch, really. Not a data flip flop, sorry. Um, that tells whether the computer is on or off. And then goes off to the second stage. Now the third stage of the computer actually goes through the second stage, the reset request. And it'll actually override this thing, which forces it to reset the computer. And um, turns off the clock as well. So this thing is basically what manages all s the main startup thing. But the actual core happens up here. Oh, sorry, just need to show you what wires go through the thing. We have the clock control line, if this is on the clock's running. The reset request, which comes back in. Manual take or update. Command override. I'll explain those later. So here's the actual clock. This generates the little signal. If you're going to do overclocking, you need to modify this and something up there, which is stage 3. So yeah, this decides the speed at which the computer runs. Um, from here, the signal goes out, little tick signal to stage three, um, and these wires go on to stage three as well. This doesn't have much to do with it. Also, the new version of the red game, as you may have seen, there's massive holes everywhere. It's to make it easier to show you guys how it all works. I've added this thing. It ignores errors. Yes, the computer is now capable of crashing. But, you can turn off crashing. That's awesome. So, well, I don't recommend it, because then your program will run completely different from what you expect it to. If errors are on, then it will actually stop working, so you know there's something wrong. Okay, so they all go from here, all the way down here, to the third stage, right here. Now, it may not look like much, but this thing is actually the reason for its speed. The clock signal comes into here through this thing uh, and goes into the master clock executor. This decides what happens when. So first, RAM gets saved from the last command. Then, after a while, the next command is chosen via the go to system which is all the way over there, goes through here, and finally, in that command, the function is performed. When the clock goes again, all the RAM things from that command happen, because RAM takes quite a while, and RAM and registers, because they're massive things, so I give it some extra time, another clock signal. If you're going to overclock it, you need to overclock this as well. I just put some random values here, uh, there's probably much faster lag, uh, faster way of doing it. So, yeah, that's all three stages of the clock. Now, when the computer requires a reset for whatever, re for whatever reason, say the computer cannot, fails to load the program. If the computer fails to boot, it sends a request signal over here to reattempt or restart. That signal goes all the way down here, all the way over there, all the way through that stage, back to stage 1, which requests the clock to be stopped, 
and send the reset request all the way back here. It's pretty advanced, but I'll show you. So, I'm just going to do manual tick from here via debugging. So here you see all the commands executed. And the next line of code is executed here. It lags a bit. Let's go on another one. Let's just skip to there. Oh wait, it's waiting for a switch, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so say we want say the computer for some reason crashed or failed. Push this oh, this gets pushed. And watch what happens to these two lines. It's actually special pulse. It's this one on. Wait, this one on. This one on off. This one off. And it's back to command one. That's the full reset request. Let's see if I can show you the thing in action. Also, that reset thing is also for if the computer shuts itself down. So we turn this thing on, this door decides to close itself. This signal over here, the clock control line, turns on. The reset request is currently off. I forgot, I need to switch this switch, otherwise it's going to freeze. Now quickly, we fly here. This is the clock working, giving its pulses. That pulsing signal goes up here. You should see a pulse. There it is. Goes into here. Goes into the master clock controller, executor, whatever. Now, watch a reset request. The computer is finished running. The reset is given. The computer is reset, and it is ready to start up. So everything is automated. It's, it, ma it manages itself. It controls everything by itself. And this little clock signal thing you see here, the master clock executor, branches it all over the place. It branches it here, which is, I believe, the first stage of the RAM controllers. I believe there's also three or two stages in that. Um, it goes... Wait, it goes there? Which branch which is the first stage of the functions, which also branches into two. There's two or three stages of that. And it goes... where else does it go? Oh, right, to the go-to. It only has... well, it's got two stages. One there and there. I'll show them in a later video. So, you know, everything's done in stages on the computer to pay to maximize efficiency and also because it's awesome. So yeah, I hope you now know how the clock works. If you don't, then you don't, then I don't know why you're watching this video. Because, like, if you're not going to know what this is, then, yeah. Not to offend you or anything, but, yeah, if you want to know how it works, it's best if you know it, understand it. Okay, so, thanks for watching. Bye.